Hello and welcome to the second edition of my Hyperthinking vlog. I uh, hope you enjoyed the first one and uh, looking forward to some feedback and comments on this. Today I'm going to talk about digital influence in Europe and we're especially looking at what's happening in Brussels. So the question I want to ask is what is digital influence? Why does it matter? And, and how does it matter to the EU in particular? Uh, we've had a lot of discussions about this. We've been working in this space for over 20 years and we've seen the growth of digital influence and the transformation of the communication landscape in which people operate. So what we need to understand, so why has the internet emerged this, as this massive platform? Well, the first thing to understand is that it's now become uh, ubiquitous in the sense that everybody has access to it and is using it in one way or the other. It's best illustrated by the U uh, cover of the Time magazine I'm sharing. And it shows the power of the individual and the ability the individual has to share information from anywhere and to reach anyone in the world who has an internet connection. Now that might seem relatively small, but in fact, it's incredibly powerful because it completely changes the hierarchy and the structure of communication. If you're a communicator and you believe that information is the ultimate source of power, and you look at the internet now and you realize that this is the ultimate source of information, your logical conclusion is the internet is now the ultimate source of power. And that means the power to shape perception. And if you shape perception, you shape behavior. So basically, if you understand this new space, you're able to change things. This is what politicians have understood when they didn't have control and access to the mainstream media and had to use social media to get their story out there. Whether it's Trump, Brexit, populists, this has been a tool for the underdog or for the politician or the, the NGO that didn't have the kind of infrastructure that traditional industries or organizations had. Does this really matter? Well, it does, although people are of course still reading magazines, watching TV, getting information from multiple sources. In a subtle, gradual way, it started to completely replace the way we get our first information, the way we're influenced and affected. And that's why we're seeing the slow death of traditional journalism being replaced by this very confusing, very dynamic, very fast moving new environment in which stories emerge from a different place and they follow different rules. We did a survey in Brussels recently asking communicators and associations what they used for their information. And two interesting things I wanted to share are that first, 87% of associations consider digital as their primary communication channel. And secondly, 71% of these people said they checked their news online first. So this really tells you something. It tells you that that's the starting point and that's the critical strategic place where the conversation happens. The other thing to look at is the influencers, the politicians. And actually, if you look at the MEPs, it's really interesting. We took a look uh, five years ago at MEPs' behavior online, and we found, for instance, that 30% of them were on Twitter. Move forward a couple of years in 2015, there you have 76% of MEPs using Twitter. And now, recently, we find that 90% of MEPs are using it. 96% of them are on Facebook. So again, it's everywhere. It doesn't mean everyone knows how to use it. It doesn't mean everyone's using it effectively. It just means it's becoming more and more significant. So the one thing that I think we can all agree on is, first of all, it is incredibly important. Secondly, it is now or it's fast becoming the most important strategic component of any communication activity. And third, we all need to embrace this and start learning how to use it. There's another important element here, which is that by not embracing digital, a lot of industries, a lot of people, traditional players have left an enormous vacuum for NGOs and for extremist opinions or populist opinions to take over the space and drive these very emotional and very polarized messages on social media, driving the kind of intense debates that turn into a kind of very polarized, very aggressive uh, engagement. And I think what's really important is that people need to all take part in this conversation, to learn this new language, and to make the case that maybe they didn't feel they needed to make before. Maybe they felt it was beneath them to go on Twitter or go on Facebook and explain to slightly strange people what the facts or the stories were. We believe that actually it's very important 
to understand what these channels are and to learn how best to use them to drive a deeper, more open and more honest conversation on critical topics for society. We're involved in a number of initiatives. We've actually, we're having an event on digital influence. You can see the hashtag here and the beautiful logo that symbolizes the fact that it's all about Twitter and individuals. And we're going to be discussing digital influence in Brussels and in the EU. And we're going to talk to people who are directly involved in this space, who are going to share their experiences, their insights. And we're going to play with hashtags, with technology, with live streaming, with 360 streaming. So it's be great fun. More information below. We mustn't forget that journalists themselves are using Twitter and social media as a source of information. It's becoming the place where stories break. So journalists are following influencers on Twitter. They pick up the story from there. They like to quote their stories directly from Twitter. What you see is more and more embeds where a quote from a politician will be put straight into the story. And that changes the flow of a new story. It means, number one, that Twitter is your new press release. And number two, it means that the story isn't just the story that appears online or in print, because it lives. If you disagree with something, you can go out and challenge the narrative that's being put out there. You can do this on Twitter, you can do this online, and you can bring your angle, your story to the conversation. At ZN, we believe that every communicator needs to be part of this new conversation. You need to educate yourself, you need to learn those skills so that you're observing the conversation, embracing it, and eventually shaping it. And that's how we can have an intelligent and informed public debate about the issues that matter to us all. So I'm going to finish with a couple of tips to help you get started on your journey in this new world or to go further in the world that you're already part of. So tip one, be there. Sounds obvious, but if you're not personally on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, you might be missing a whole conversation and a new communication language. Even if you don't know how to do it, just sign up and start watching the conversation. Tip two, before you start doing anything else, you can start following people. You can follow people on Twitter, you can like Facebook pages and start observing the kind of conversations that are taking place so that you're personally aware of these stories. Tip three, great way to start to see the relevance and power of this in, in a simple way is to go to events and look for the hashtag of the event, the hashtag like this, um, because that tells you who's at the event, what they're saying, and who's following the conversations at the event. And you'll see directly how you can make your point, how you can agree, retweet something, or eventually put a different point of view and be part of this conversation. Tip four, start slow. You don't have to be tweet tweeting 15 times a day. You can just retweet things, like them, observe things, get comfortable with the process, and slowly start. Tip five, share your story. There's something you know that's definitely going to be of interest to people out there. So look at what you could share in terms of articles, in terms of insights, in terms of ingredients that might help somebody better understand a situation. Share it and you will help people form better judgments. Uh, tip six, test and learn because there is no ultimate formula. In fact, Twitter's announced that it was going to move from 140 to 280 characters. These things happen all the time and you need to adapt. So it's always about testing trial and error, learning how things are changing and adapting with those changes. That's all I have time for today, but I hope you enjoyed it. Please check the links below, share, like the video, give me your comment, your feedback, and hope to see you next time. That's all. Goodbye. Thank you.